Pluto should be a planet again, according to a new study. Here's what you need to know. The International Astronomical Union should rescind their non-scientific definition of Pluto as a dwarf planet, according to a five-year study in the journal Icarus. Pluto was controversially relegated from a full planetary status in 2006 because it didn't hit all three of a new set of planet-defining criteria. The IAU said that while Pluto does have enough mass to ensure that it is rounded out by its own gravity and it orbits a star, which are the first two criteria, it also shares gravitational space with other objects in its orbit, and this means it should not be classified as a planet. The new study, however, says this definition was engineered to simplify our picture of the solar system by ruling out dozens of other large planetary objects like Eris and Makemake and thus has reopened a long-standing debate. Notably in the new study's favor is the fact that Pluto is actually in no way alone in sharing gravitational space with other objects in its orbit, according to The Verge, with thousands of asteroids orbiting along with Earth, for instance. Writing in National Geographic, however, Steven Soder of the American Museum of Natural History has previously sought to address this point by clarifying that a planet should be able to dynamically dominate its orbit zone, meaning that it has swept away objects out of its orbital path to the extent that it is clearly the largest object occupying that area, as opposed to sharing its orbit with nothing else, according to The Verge. Fitting that bill, Earth is 1.7 million times bigger than all of the asteroids in its orbital zone combined, while Pluto is just 7.7% of the mass of all the objects that cross its path. However, this argument is not enough for the scientists behind the new Icarus study. They say that the definition of a planet should align with geological complexity rather than an oversimplified folk taxonomy, which provides us with the conveniently low, public-friendly number of eight planets in our solar system. Under that definition, Pluto with its thin atmosphere, complex geology, and maybe even a liquid ocean would be considered a planet, and so would up to 150 other objects in our solar system, according to the study. Of course, Pluto's geological complexity is not the only planetary debate going on right now in the science world, and one key scientific protagonist is involved in the other major one as well. In September, Michael Brown, the astronomer who led the campaign that saw Pluto demoted from planet to dwarf planet, wrote in a California Institute of Technology study that evidence pointing to the existence of an entirely separate ninth planet was unlikely to be a fluke, according to NBC News. Planet 9, it is said, would orbit the Sun far beyond Neptune and was conceived of due to the unusual positioning of a number of icy asteroids and cometary cores in the Kuiper Belt. There has been pushback against the idea, with some previously suggesting that observation bias meant overrating the significance of the cluster. However, the September study, which takes into account a greater number of object observations than previously, calculates just a 0.4% chance that the unusual clustering is a fluke, and if Planet 9 does exist, it is likely to be either a rocky super-Earth or a gaseous mini-Neptune, according to National Geographic. Adding detail to the theory, Brown has said that Planet 9 likely formed a similar distance from the Sun to Uranus and Neptune, but was thrown to its current far-out position by the strong gravity of Saturn. He also says he hopes that the planet might be able to be seen in survey data from a new large telescope at the Vera Rubin Observatory, scheduled to be fully operational in 2023, adding even more confidently that he believes images of Planet 9 already exist somewhere. I don't think anything has been discovered that was not later found in existing data, he said, starting with Uranus all the way to Pluto and Eris. Of course, somewhat ironically, given Brown's involvement on the other side of the argument with Pluto, the doubts over Planet 9 still persist, with one significant theory in the Astronomical Journal Letters last year even suggesting that Planet 9 is actually a black hole. And this is perhaps where we start to see that science can be a tough place to work. Brown referred to that black hole theory as almost a joke, and in similarly bullish terms, totally dismissed the latest attempt to reclassify Pluto as a planet, telling NBC, I think the IAU fixed an embarrassing mistake that had been perpetuated for generations when it reclassified Pluto. The solar system is now sensible, he added. Of the two debates, Planet 9 seems better placed to get a definitive answer right now. It will either be there or it won't, whereas the definition of a planet appears more slippery. But then you start to wonder if a whole new debate opens up about Planet 9 being or not being a planet if they found it. The only definite outcome in those circumstances is surely that Mike Brown is going to send some very, very angry emails. A recent attempt to explain the origins of Oumuamua, the first interstellar object ever detected passing through our solar system, has been countered by two Harvard astrophysicists, 
one of whom, A.V. Loeb, has famously suggested that it could be a piece of alien technology, according to SciTech Daily. Detected on October 19, 2017, Oumuamua was initially difficult to categorize before the nitrogen iceberg theory of the object emerged and satisfied many scientists. That theory, presented in the AGU Journal of Geophysical Research, Planets, suggested the 45-meter object appears to be made from frozen nitrogen like the surface of Pluto. Astrophysicists behind it said Oumuamua likely ejected from the surface of a Pluto-like exoplanet during a collision half a billion years ago, and what's more, this type of collision was common enough to satisfy the statistical likelihood of Oumuamua being detected in our solar system. This origin story would explain Oumuamua's strange, flat shape, as its outer layers would have been evaporated by cosmic radiation. And it would also explain why, like a comet, Oumuamua sped up erratically as it approached the sun and sunlight vaporized the ices it is made of. However, SciTech Daily explains that Harvard astrophysicists have cast doubt over this theory because it requires the existence of too many Pluto-like exoplanets. Writing in the New Astronomy Journal, they say Oumuamua's size, plus the number of theoretically similar objects required to make its discovery likely, requires much more nitrogen than is predicted to exist in the universe, according to Live Science. The new paper explains that pure nitrogen is rare. In our solar system, it has been found on Triton and Pluto, where it represents around 0.5% of the total mass of the dwarf planet, and star systems likely do not contain enough nitrogen ice to allow for such a large population of Pluto-like exoplanets or the theoretically abundant nitrogen ice Oumuamua's they might produce. This counterposition itself is now controversial, though, with one of the authors of the original nitrogen theory, Stephen Desch, telling Universe Today that the estimates of the number of likely Oumuamua equivalents used by the Harvard astrophysicists was too high, and as a result, so was their estimate of the amount of nitrogen required to create them. Desch explained that with a lower estimate of the total number of Oumuamua equivalents floating around in space used in the original theory, a lower amount of nitrogen is required to exist, and thus so is a more reasonable number of Pluto-like exoplanets. They are attempting to manufacture controversy where none exists, he added. China's moon rover has discovered a strange object on the dark side of the moon. Here's what you need to know. China's Yutu-2 moon rover has spotted an as-yet-unidentified, cube-shaped mystery hut on the far side of the moon, according to Space.com. The rover became the first to land safely on the moon's far side when it touched down on January 3, 2019, and since then has been very slowly making its way northwest through the von Karman crater within the South Pole Atkin Basin. It spotted the unknown object on the horizon to the north, roughly 80 meters away from it in November, on the mission's 36th lunar day, according to Space.com. However, despite much recent interest, space journalist Andrew Jones tweeted that the object was likely nothing more mysterious than a boulder, which can be excavated by objects hitting the moon. This theory chimes with U2-2's other work, mapping varying layers of the moon's subsurface generated by space debris impacts, according to a science advances study. And in fact, Space.com explains that although a U2-2 diary published by a science outreach channel affiliated with the China National Space Administration referred to the object as a mystery hut, this was meant as a placeholder name rather than an accurate description. Whatever it ultimately turns out to be, Yu Tu Tu is now expected to spend the next two to three lunar days, or two to three Earth months, traveling toward it to get a closer look, according to Space.com. New research suggests Pluto started out with a subsurface ocean that has been slowly freezing over time. The findings are based on an analysis of pictures of Pluto's surface taken by NASA's New Horizons mission. These show extensive ridges and troughs consistent with the planet expanding as its ocean froze. Pluto is thought to possess a liquid ocean beneath a thin icy surface and a mantle of watery ice, according to the paper which was published in the journal Nature Geoscience. The study suggests the heat energy that allowed for a liquid ocean came from rocks colliding with and raining down on Pluto as the planet formed. Heat may also have been generated by radioactive elements in the rocks. The research suggests other big Kuiper Belt objects, the largest of which are Pluto, Eric, Haumea and Makemake, may also have once held liquid oceans on their surfaces. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.